with that. Okay, so yes, thank you again for joining today on Fruits and Bronze. A little bit about Matisse. Um, I'm a great admirer of his work. Most recently, did a Zoom a few weeks ago, a, a few weeks ago on cut uh, on the cutouts that he's done, and we had a holiday theme around holiday cutouts. So, was basically using his methodology of scissors and cutting into paper. Uh, painted paper, if you will, and we did a couple of different holiday-themed wreaths and poinsettias. Um, if you're ever interested, feel free to just email me. I'm happy to share that archive video with you and presentation. Um, but a little bit about Matisse. Um, he was born in 1869, passed away in 1954. Um, a lot of his fine work was created around this period that he did this piece for Fruits and Bronze in the early 1900s um, and he developed a, a, a rigorous style, if you will, that emphasized flat forms um, and decorative pattern. Some even say that he was the primary forefather for graphic design. Um, I mean, it's up to you in terms of how you want to, you know, interpret his work. Uh, I really admire it in the sense that um, there's a lot of emotional factor into it. It's, it's really uh, detached from any sort of realism and on purpose. Um, it's a, about that um, emo, uh, emotional interpretation. Um, so a little bit about the work leading up to and around this time for Fruits and Bronze. So you'll notice some adjacencies around uh, the still life work that he did. So this is an earlier on work prior to the Fruit and Bronze. But I love this um, work because it's it's that pastel type effect to it, if you will. The decorative use of the background, you notice like a, a lot of bright uh, uh, patterns and colors. Uh, he, Matisse is known for his use of bold color. Um, and even just looking at a fruit example here, each fruit has so much dimension yet is also flat at the same time. So his use of color was just really striking. Um, here's another example and I was, um, I'm grateful that I was able to see this in person at the Barnes Museum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And most definitely it's a different experience when you see a Matisse in person. I highly recommend uh, visiting the Barnes Museum. Uh, Dr. Barnes curated a bunch of work uh, throughout his lifetime and this is just so striking to me. This blue artwork, uh, when I saw it in person, it just blew me away. But as you can even see from this digital form, the still life on the blue table, the decorative tablecloth, that actually becomes sort of like a theme with his work. Um, so you'll notice uh, some similarities as, as I move forward. Here's another work that I would say that's somewhat similar to the painting we're going to do today. Um, this was uh, shortly around the time that he did Fruits and Bronze. Um, as you can see, some similarities here around like the tapestry or the decorative rug. On top of that, there's different shaped vases, right? And then he has the bronze as well, the uh, nude bronze, this woman at a slight angle. And it's almost like you can't see where the line is where he puts these items on top of. Whether it's a table or a floor, the rug seems to be going up a wall potentially, but maybe not. Um, so there's like some imaginary lines here that we, the viewer, have to kind of grasp and interpret in our own ways. Um, so just a little bit more about Matisse so we can get going in terms of being inspired by his method and what he was thinking about when he was doing this work. Um, basically, he mentioned balance, purity, and serenity were his watchwords. And um, he did a lot of interiors here. Um, and uh, he combines an illusion of endlessly unfolding space. So there's a particular reason why there's no distinct lines. Or if the lines are there, they're very like um, purposeful. And um, we, the viewer, kind of interpret the rest of what we should be seeing there. Um, 
And then he has that contradictory sensation of extreme flatness in his work. Um, so the work on the right is the still life uh, with aubergines, uh, so, or i.e. eggplants. We're drawn into the painting and pushed back into our own reality, uh, this author was saying, creating an illusion of continuous space. We don't know where it starts. We don't know where it ends. It's up to our own interpretation. Um, and then one other quote that I wanted to mention here, the role of all decorative painting is to enlarge surface, surfaces. So um, I don't know if that means like, you know, we're able to look at things more closely and then reflect on these things. We're able to zoom, zoom in essentially to see uh, the beauty of this decorative work and objects. And then simultaneously, it's my own interpretation, we're able to zoom out and uh, it's just eye pleasing for us. Uh, we're gonna get painting here very soon. Um, just one more few quotes uh, around Matisse. He said, uh, Matisse said you have to read between the lines. He would stop at a line at the ear and begin it again at the neck. Um, he was exercising the viewer's mind to fill in the blanks. So we're okay with that. Like it's not about perfectionism at all. It's about we're making our own conclusions based on these uh, outlines or lines that he was able to shape for us and uh, we're able to interpret it in our own ways. He said, Matisse said that uh, I don't literally paint the table, but the emotion it produces upon me. And he also said, what I dream of is an art of balance, purity, and serenity. Once again, touching on those uh, keywords, something like a good armchair, which provides relaxation from physical fatigue. Um, I love his compositions and his bold use of color. Um, so uh, that good armchair effect is definitely in play for us, I think, when we observe Matisse. So I'm gonna stop screen sharing here. Uh, what I would suggest is maybe minimizing the presentation of, of this or uh, the image of this painting. I'm gonna start uh, pinning my other um, view where we're gonna start sketching and painting. Um, so let's just shift over there. And feel free to tune in to Eventbrite uh, with Open Door Studies if you're interested in any future Zoom sessions, I'd appreciate you joining. So I'm gonna stop my screen share and then I'm gonna pin my other video so that you'll be able to hopefully see that. Um, and then let me see, are you able to see it in the main view? It's a pencil with a canvas on it. Mm, no. no. I may need to then uh, also um, there's another button here. Okay. Oh, got it. So spotlight for everyone. Can you guys see it now as the main view? Yep. Okay, great. All right, so uh, let's start sketching here. And um, I'm going to just put the painting alongside this on my screen here. Just one second. I'm just moving my windows around just a little bit. Okay. So what we have here, and hopefully you can see well, is that um, we have this tapestry to start. So what I'm going to do is on the left-hand side of it, of the piece of paper or canvas that you have, just start outlining the tapestry. So um, it's okay if it's not, you know, a perfect line at all, it's a uh, free flow. So I'm going down to the left side and then kind of making like a reverse L, uh, like as you see in the painting. Um, so that re represents the bottom of the tapestry. And then um, to reflect the bottom edge of the tapestry. At the bottom of the canvas itself, I'm just drawing a line across at an angle. As you see, it goes down. 
and then one more line below that. So that would be like the decorative edge that we'll fill in in just a little bit. And what you see on the bottom left is maybe like a dark green table. So to represent that table, what I'm going to do is just draw one, one straight, straight, straight line down, semi-straight line down here, and that will be the bottom edge of that green table he seems to depict. So now we have the left-hand side. Um, along with that tapestry, it looks like there's like a greenish, ivory-ish trim to the tapestry. So I'm just denoting the border there for, 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 for us right there. And I want to draw that imaginary line uh, just so that we can, it can help us with placements of objects on top of the tapestry. And the reason um, I'm doing that is so that it can help us with, with uh, just eyeballing where everything will go. So I'm just going to draw a very fine line going down at an angle here for that effect. And then on the right hand side to complete the biggest item here on the, uh, the, uh, the canvas itself, I'm going to draw the edge of the other trim um, on the right hand side here. So let me just drawing it down here. And then it, as you know, you may notice it's another reverse L. So it comes down this way, uh, down uh, to the left, the bottom of that L, if you will. And then it goes down this way and it kind of makes like a, a triangle shape on the lower right hand corner, if you will. And then with that, um, I'm just making the border trim a little bit here. And then it comes down like a reverse L again. And then the dark green edge of the green table, I'm just denoting that like, like a little shape here at the bottom. Okay, so we got the tapestry and we have the table, base of the table. We're going to start sketching um, and feel free to move along um, um, in the pace that suits you. I'm just trying to set the groundwork for us. If, if you're uh, way ahead of me, for example, feel free to keep going. Um, these are just merely suggestions on how we might start sketching and painting. So I'm going to go back to the left again. Um, there's a, a bowl of fruit on the leftmost side of the tapestry. So what I'm going to do there is just roughly sketch that bowl. It's this like white ceramic uh, circular shape. And if you notice, it has an edge to it. So we're just going to also great, great, uh, have a line that uh, gracefully comes down that uh, circular edge here. And then you'll notice there's a little uh, pedestal part portion of it. So I'm just accounting for that here. And then meeting those two lines here. And um, it's unclear if it's part of the tapestry uh, or it might be another plate, but there's like a reddish uh, form underneath the white fruit basket or the fruit ceramic base. So I'm just going to account for that here. It's like an oblong oval, if you will. Okay, and then it looks like there's pomegranates or lemons on top of the, um, uh, the, the plate here. So I'm just going to uh, roughly sketch those. Uh, looks like a lemon and then it looks like a rounder pomegranate or apple and then there's one behind the reddish one that's a little bit more grayed out so we got our fruit basket going and then at the edge of that fruit basket if you'll notice is um like a, a lemon or two and a fruit so I'm just roughly just drawing that here, like an apple and a lemon here. Okay, we'll come back to the bronze uh, in a little bit. I just want to get warmed up with the fruit first um, and the bigger, uh, the other bigger objects. So 
We also have at the middle of this tapestry, it looks like, and it kind of comes towering up towards the middle of the height of the tapestry is a, a larger fruit, fruit bowl or stand. So I'm gonna draw that uh, bowl here. And then um, once again, I'm gonna draw the base, but this time the base of this is a bit longer. And then it has like a round bottom, if you will. Um, and then um, what you'll notice is that the top of the bowl has a couple of, of fruit, fruit on it. So what I'm going to do there is just kind of sketch that fruit here. One second. Um, has a little, uh, the top of the fruit here. And then there's like a red one, a yellow lemon, if you will another red one, and another lemon. So just roughly sketching those in. At the base of that tall um, bowl, if you will, is a blue decorative ob uh, uh, motif. So I'm just accounting for that here. It has uh, triangle tips with you like edges so just gonna sketch that in real quick and then the bowl itself also has these triangular blue patterns just roughly sketching that in for us to remember to paint that blue and then alongside of it there's two vases so the 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 thin skinnier one um, has a long neck and it's almost like floating above the tapestry. We don't really know exactly where the table line is. So we're just gonna draw this long neck and then have that um, come down. It's almost like an empty wine bottle and it's kind of floating almost. Then you have this upside down uh, U shape here. Um, was there a question? Okay, never mind. <laughs> that was from before. And then um, at the top of that vase is a pink flower. It's a abstract flower. Um, what I'd like to do is just kind of pencil in that that petal here, a petal, pink petal there and three pink supporting petals. Um, it has uh, three green leaves or leaves. And then a little triangular leaf up, up across diagonally from it. Now we have this gorgeous blue and white uh, vase, a uh, round vase. What we're gonna do is come towards the right hand side and um, I'm just gonna draw the, the sh very short neck of this vase. And then it, it's very wide at the top. So it has a little bit of height and then it has this roundedness that we wanna depict. And then it comes down like a curve. Same with the other side, around big roundedness and it comes down. And then there's the base here. Um, so the rounded top, just making sure there's a little bit of height there for that. Um, it's almost like two blue crescent moons. So I'm just gonna sketch those in for us so we remember to paint those in that blue color two crescent moon like shapes. Then we have an abstract like petal type shape here. And then I would say it looks like an abstract kind of like shape, decorative shape, but almost looks like a bird or a bunny. Just gonna follow the lines. 
has like a U like bottom and then there's like a big ear like bunny ear petal type shape here and then below that is a smaller decorative shape it looks like a bird abstract bird all right so we got that now let's fill in the um the fruit that's on the tapestry um so there's fruit that meets the bottom of the rounded vase so i'm just gonna pencil that in almost looks like a bottom of an apple has like a pointed citron next to it I'm following below that there's a circular orange type shape fruit and below that is a red and green type apple or crab apple so just accounting for that alongside of it um, at the base of the tall um, uh, fruit stand is a pointed lemon so I'm just gonna account for that And then um, below the lemon to the right a little bit is like a crab apple with a red and green. And then alongside the crab apple is a bigger apple, green apple with reddish tint. Okay. Um, okay. Now let's go towards the bronze and then we'll fill out the rest of the decorative tapestry and start painting. Okay, so for the bronze, as you as you may notice from Matisse's work, um, it's very um, abstract, uh, the shapes. So I'm going to eyeball where the head might start from the first bronze on the upper left. Um, so the bronze comes up near the top third of the painting. So that's the hair here or the head here. Comes down like this, like a woman's hair or head. And there's no facial definition. It's just the, the side of her face and the, her back of her hair. Then there looks to be a shoulder that comes across that's like hugging or starting to embrace the other bronze so i'm just accounting for that line here and then um there's a chest portion here that comes down and then there's a thigh line and the coat comes in and goes down to the table calf line and then like like the foot and then the the back her back has like a shoulder blade that you can kind of see here abstract comes down with her back her 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 back and then um thigh line down to that comes in towards the calf and goes down like so so it's just like a rounded shapes for the calf and then her foot. Now for the other bronze that's like sort of embracing her, um, for that you have the head comes up slightly above hers here and the hairline comes down here. You have just like a a square line depicting like an eyebrow or eye line a little bit of definition in the nose and mouth like indentation really not 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 a lot of definition chin line comes in a little bit with the neckline and then there's the other arm that's like the elbow and then the elbow comes in and out goes out and in uh, there's the the chest and then there's a uh, triangular 
torso, that downward facing, like a V, if you will. And then there's this rounded thigh uh, that comes down. And in the painting, it actually meets the vase. It's not meeting mine in, in mine, but that's okay. And then the foot comes down here. The other leg with the thigh comes in at the calf. And then the foot at an angle here. So, and then the rounded hand here. Okay, so whew, we got through that part. <laughs> All right, so um, the remainder of the tapestry. So a couple of quick things we can do here is that we had that bar of um, ivory green that we're, it's just gonna be ivory green here. And then above her head, there's another stripe of uh, trim that has the crisscross or the cross type of uh, pattern. So what I'm literally gonna do is just kind of pencil in like a cross there for that. And you'll notice it comes down uh, behind her and there's like another angled cross behind her leg. So I'm just factoring in that in my sketch here. And then um, at the left-hand side, bottom trim as well, we have that crisscross uh, pattern. So I'm gonna depict those. It looks like there's like four of them at the bottom here, four or five of them. So I'm just kind of seeing if I can de depict those real quick. Oops, that one's a little bit wider than I wanted. There we go. So depicted four of them down here. Now we're gonna move over to uh, behind the uh, bronze. There's a round circular um, a, a decorative motif. So I'm gonna draw in that braid. So basically it looks like a U. It goes up to the top of the painting. So I'm drawing like a U-shaped border for now. And then I'm gonna, it's, it almost looks like braided and the braided effect, I'm just gonna like slightly depict the rounded lines for the braided effect. Okay, and there's a floral uh, decorative motif coming out from within it. So it's like a circular shape here. It's gonna be like a turquoise. It has a spiky flower. So I'm just kind of sketching that in here. It has uh, There we go. And alongside it is like another like apricot colored, very abstract shape. I'm just putting that in here. To the right of that is a crescent moon uh, type shape. So let me depict that here. Abstract shape. Above the vase with the pink flower, there's a um, decorative motif. So I'm gonna start sketching that. So it, it looks like there's two pointed arrow type shapes above that motif. Like antlers almost. And then there's a um, a bird-like motif that comes up and embraces those arrows. So I'm drawing like a diamond shape in the middle coming down and then uh, it's almost like a wings of a bird, if you will. 
It's got featheriness to the shape at the bottom. Okay, and what you'll notice is the red portion of the tapestry. So there's blue, but there's also some red. So the red comes down under the decorative motif at an angle and then comes in and goes out again and behind the flower. And then from the flower, the redness comes down to the tall vase, the tall um, fruit stand. And it looks like it goes behind it, almost reaching the toes of the bronze. Comes down towards the fruit stand. It's almost like a red river. Uh, <clears throat> just penciling the outline of that down to the right of the tapestry. So um, the red goes under the crab apple and then it meets alongside the fruit stand, goes up and under the green wine, empty wine vase. meeting the other fruit here. And then alongside the rounded vase, the redness goes down here, here, up here. And then from here is the other part of that red um, decorative pattern. It comes down behind the rounded vase here. Okay, and then there's a little bit here be, behind these two vases that is a ivory color. So I'm just factoring that in. Okay, there's another crescent moon shape opposite the other one here up here. Let me just make sure that you guys can see. So the upper right corner of the canvas right now, we're gonna just finish that off in terms of sketching. So there's a big circular upper right uh, decorate, de decorative motif. It has like a oblong shapes at the corner. And then it has like a green shape here a red shape here, a light blue shape, and an ivory bit here. All right, how's everyone doing? Good. Okay, great. We're almost done with the sketch. Um, all we have left is just the the rightmost side of here, which has the cross motif down the tapestry. So I'm going to account for that. And then we're going to get started with painting. So I'm just going to roughly put seven or so crosses down that trim of the tapestry. Alrighty, and we have, all right, so first, um, <laughs> apologies for the smudging. This is what happens with the lefty <laughs> when you're left-handed. Um, so um, first we're gonna paint the background. Usually painting the background a bold color, um, but like I usually do like a wash so that we can still see the sketches that we made. Um, so I think I'm going to propose that we painted a blue color, like a somewhat brightish blue, uh, boldish blue. Um, and the reason for that is most of this piece is a blue. So I think we can build on that as it dries up. I'm going to be using acrylic paints. So I'm going to paint the whole thing like a wash of blue, but to the point where I can still see through 
uh, the sketches. And then obviously the edges, once they're dried up, I'm going to paint over them with like a lavender, as you see on both sides of the piece. Um, but since most of this is going to be a blue background with some red in here, we're going to build on the initial blue, if that makes sense. Okay, so <clears throat> getting my Y brush and we're going to find a blue that we can build off of. So I have here a blue. I'm just generously applying some water to it. making sure to get to the edges so I don't want to have to fill those in later if I don't have to. And I can still see the sketch, which is good. It'll help out a little bit as we progress through this. And I'm going to try to get through most of the painting as much as we can. Don't want to rush you, especially because everybody has their own pace and how how detailed they want to focus on this. But I'll try to get through a majority of it and then, you know, feel free to finish off at your own pace and leisure after the session. Uh, don't want to rush anybody. So, but yeah, I'll try to get through most of it so that you, you will have some different ideas on how you might want to paint the rest of the painting. It's interesting on the video it comes out darker than it is in real life. <gasps> All right, I'm just going to let that air dry for just a, a few seconds and then I'll move on. Just, where's my piece of paper? All right, yes, it's starting to dry a little bit, so that's great. All right, so I'm gonna start, start with some of the blue-themed ones so that it doesn't, you know, get uh, mixed up with other colors as it's still drying. Um, so some of the blue-themed I see, I want to start off with this amazing vase, the rounded vase, if that's okay. Um, but feel free to, you know, go at it at, at, at your own leisure if you want. Uh, for that, I'm going to fill in the, um, the uh, whitish, grayish vase and build the bluish on top of it. If you look really closely at it, it's not really a stark white. It's almost like a mix between white and blue maybe a little bit of gray. Um, it may even have like a green line to it. It's almost like the color of the wine, empty wine bottle, bottle vase next to it is reflecting off of it. It's just amazing how Matisse uh, depicted some of this. Um, and look again, and there's another color. Uh, and Van Gogh's really like that too, I feel like. Once you start recreating some of Van Gogh's work. We did Starry Night over Zoom a couple weeks ago, and it was amazing once you uh, uh, stop and really look at something and then look at it again. Look at it again, like different colors seem to pop up out of the painting. Um, alrighty. So I'm just going to paint the crescent 
to start as it's still drying a little bit. So abstract crescent, got the abstract shape next to it. And then it has this uh, amazing abstract shape underneath. And then the bird-like shape below that. Same thing for the vase in the middle, the fruit stand in the middle. Uh, while the paint's drying, I'm just going <laughs> to build on the dark blue a little bit. So the triangular shape of the bowl, it's the bowl's motif here. And there's almost like a very thin blue line for the bowl. Then there's the triangular motif at the bottom base of it. And another distinctive blue, since we have blue in our hands, is that river of blue uh, below the vase and around the fruit. If you remember, we sketched the red part of it. So we can paint in the blue part here around the fruit, since we have blue in our hands. And there's also a little bit of a sliver of blue on the tapestry behind the vase, filling that one out too. Okay. I think it's dried enough where I can fill in the rest of the vase, the white, whitish, bluish vases. And I'm applying like just a very teeny bit of blue to my white so that I have like similar effect. neck of the fruit stand. And the white comes down under the blue motif.
there's a tinge of blue shadow on the leftmost side of the um, root stand. I got the rounded vase as well. We can come in later and do some of the outline of the top of the neck of that rounded vase. For now, I'm just trying to account for the whiteness in the vase. I'm just uh, touching up my crescents. Okay. I want to fill out the rest of the tapestry with the blue um, and then I'll start to feel like we're making substantive progress. Um, so the blue um, from the left to the right, there's a darker blue at the bottom of the tapestry and a lighter blue coming up towards behind the bronzes. So just to keep that in mind as you kind of fill in those areas and then um, for the decorative motifs, we can outline them with that ivory color that we've sketched. Okay. So I'm just going to fill in the, the dark blue here, the bottom of the tapestry. Going around the red area that we sketched and leaving the trim out for now with the crosses. Kind of going around the fruit. And then the blue goes around and underneath the bronze statues. So just finishing off the bottom dark part. Underneath the bronze.
around the fruit basket just a little bit. All right. Now I'm gonna do behind the bronze, the uh, the lighter dark blue. Not too much lighter, just a little bit lighter. So behind the tall fruit basket, or the fruit stand, alongside the bronze. around the decorative motif. Around the, behind the fruit of the tall cake stand, I mean the fruit stand. around the crescent shape. Okay, and around uh, the decorative motif on the upper right, and the other crescent shape. And there's a little bit of dark blue at the topmost right corner. I'm just going to fill that in. Okay. Uh, here. I'm just checking if there's any missing spots of dark blue. So we got the dark river a little bit here next to the vase underneath the fruit, around the fruit. I have to uh, outline the uh, decorative motif back up there.
All right, let's go for the reds, if that's okay. <coughs> so reds, um, obviously there's like the red uh, motif, I mean the, uh, the room on the tapestry. So I'm gonna go for that from left to right. So left-hand side underneath the ceramic fruit bowl um, is the red. It's like a brick red or um, coppery type red. Just gonna mix a tinge of uh, uh, like a hay type color to my red for that effect. Just just a teeny bit. And it comes down and under the fruit bowl here. around this fruit on the tapestry. There's the red pomegranate type shape on the fruit bowl. I still have the uh, brush with me with the white and blue, so I'm just going to fill out the ceramic fruit bowl too. I'll have to go back and outline it. For definition later. Okay. Now the other red pieces are um, behind the uh, fruit stand, underneath the bronze. And then it comes down underneath the fruit stand. And alongside it. Yeah, the contrast between the red and the blue, it really makes the painting pop or start to.
Okay. Goes up and down and underneath. So that part's done. And then it meets the end of the tapestry over here. So the only red left over is underneath the decorative motif and behind that rounded vase. Okay. And then there's just a teeny bit of red alongside the vase. So. Okay, so we got our blue, we got our reds. Um, let's see, the purple, why don't we try the purple on the left hand side, on the right hand side for the background? So it's like a lavender-ish color. Uh, should be fairly quick for us to cover. I'm gonna uh, just use my purple here.
teeny bit of purple on the lower left as well. For the right hand side, got a triangle of purple <clears throat> in the lower right. Excluding the dark green part. Okay. All right, I'm going to go with uh, the rest of the fruits real quick, and then we'll finish off with the bronze. I think um, after the session, it may be worth just outlining some key pieces, like outlining the bronze and then outlining the fruit stands uh, with a bolder outline and also the vase on the right-hand side. So let me get with the fruits. So I already had red that I started with the pomegranate. So I'm gonna go across the painting with red and yellow for the fruit. Got my yellow here. And this the subtle yellow behind this pomegranate. I'll come back and outline those later. Um, with the yellow, let's build up the trim. So we're gonna add some greenish tint to it later. Along with the decorative trim. We'll come back and do the details of the crosses later. Okay. There's two fruit under the bronze a lemon, and then there's an apple with like a yellowish um, left edge. I'm using a bolder red for that apple to contrast from the um, the red tapestry. Actually, I'm going to touch back over the pomegranate with the bolder red too. For the contrast. And then above the a uh, tall fruit bowl, there's a uh, apple and lemons. That 
that looks like a mango. Come back with an orange. It's got a yellowish side to it. We have a lemon type shape here. And one between. Okay, there's a lemon underneath the stand. And there's two apples underneath with a greenish tint. Okay, doing the apples on the right. The fruit beneath the rounded vase. Okay. I'm going to do the very pale yellow uh, part of the tapestry. Thank you. 
Okay. That pale yellow outlines the um, decorative motif. Okay, since I still have some pale yellow left, I will finish the decorative trim and do the crosses at the very last. Okay. All right, the bronzes. Uh, the bronzes are like a, are like a dark turquoise. Um, and then it might be best to go over with them with black outline after they're dried a bit, just to uh, re-give the, to provide that definition. Of the shapes. And then I'm going to use a lighter green color left over from the bronze for the decorative motif behind it. So the cone shape there. Um, and 
and then like the 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 braided look of the motif Now I'm just checking for like what areas do I still have to fill out. Um, it looks like I, I still have some areas of dark blue that I didn't go over the first time. So I'm just going to fill those out. And you can start to fill out the um, the blue crosses along the trim as well. It has like a uh, reddish middle. So basically I'm just filling in the blanks now and I'll have to do some outlines. Um, over back some of the details.
I'm just going to finish off with the, the vase real quick and the right hand corner um, just to make sure like everyone has a good idea of what's left. Um, I know we're almost at time so um, happy to send the recording as well. Uh, just want to finish that the main pieces here. So we got the green vase. green leaves, leaves, we got the upper right corner with uh, the blocks of colors yellow and the pink flowers Almost forgot the blue crosses on the trim on the right hand side. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was a lot to, for us to try to attempt in 90 minutes. Um, I hope you enjoyed this session. I hope it was relaxing for you. 
I'm going to go over this and make sure I do some of those out outlines, as I mentioned, uh, just to give it more definition uh, to the simple forms after the session. But hopefully this was um, enjoyable for you and I'd love to see your creations. Feel free to share those um, after the fact. I'm also going to be putting this on Instagram once I put the finishing touches. Um, uh, my handle there's open door studies so um, and I'll also like um, tag it as a Matisse and a paint like series so um, would you let me know how you're doing before we go everyone okay <laughs> oh yes everybody everything is fine um, I love this exercise and thank you very much. I'm from Mexico. Oh, so wow. this is, uh, I'm in Mexico already. <laughs> so uh, this is wonderful job. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, and I'll look forward to hopefully painting with you again in the near future. Thank you again. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you.